confidential letter which was exposed by the Danish newspaper BT reveals that political influence might be skewing the decisions of the International Criminal Tribunal of the former Yugoslavia in The Hague, the ICTY. After the atrocities of the Second World War, the concept of international law has been promoted in the United Nations in order to prevent a recurrence of such crimes against humanity. But the various treaties and conventions approved to protect the rights of all human beings wherever they may be have depended on each government to uphold and respect. The measures available for the international community to enforce the respect of human rights remained weak and few. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, the ICTY, was established by Resolution 827 of the UN Security Council before the war in Yugoslavia ended. The Security Council extended the court's existence and called it to end its work by the end of the year 2014. The establishment of the International Criminal Court, the ICC, in The Hague in 2002 was based on the Rome Statute, the treaty from 1998, which has so far been adopted by 122 states around the world. The court was designed to establish the means to enforce the existing UN resolutions against genocide, against crimes against humanity and against war crimes. Individuals could be extradited to the ICC to stand trial in such cases where their own states failed to try them for their crimes. If the crimes were committed within the territory of a state which signed the Rome Statute, the court's jurisdiction would apply and the court could try and sentence the suspects. The International Court of Justice, the ICJ, is a courthouse established in 1946 to settle disputes between states and to give advisory opinions on the application of international law. For example, the ICJ gave its advisory opinion that the wall of separation built on the occupied West Bank by Israel is in violation of international law. Actually, uh, it was the United States, uh, along with the British, uh, who were uh, strong advocates for the idea of a world court originally around the turn of the 20th century. And um, uh, that said, there's always been a little bit of a love-hate relationship uh, in the sense that within the U.S. there have been a range of views about the idea of a world court. Was it a good thing? Would it help bring about peace? Um, or would it be uh, a body that infringed on... Uh, U.S. sovereignty, and that those themes have persisted uh, since the beginning, I think. Indeed, the idea that crimes committed in foreign states could be tried by international courts, such as the ICTY, the ICC, or the ICJ, is especially threatening to countries which regularly send their forces across the border on violent missions, most notably the U.S. and Israel. It is no coincidence that the U.S. and Israel exerted tremendous pressure on the Palestinian government not to sign the Rome Statute, even after Palestine was recognized as a state by the UN General Assembly. If the Palestinians signed the statute, every Israeli soldier stationed in the occupied Palestinian territory would be at risk of extradition to the ICC. The ICC was criticized that it had so far only tried suspects from Africa. The court argued that it has been invited by African countries to assist in applying international law in Africa, but it remains a blatant fact that the court did not try international law offenders from Western states. Yes, it is true that uh, Africans and uh, a, a few token Serbs thrown in, uh, the big fish, the United States and the NATO nations are free to violate international law, to violate human rights with complete impunity. Uh, since the ICC was founded, the United States invaded Iraq. Um, you could call that a genocide. To this day, there are children in the city of Fallujah being born with grotesque deformities as a result of uh, some of the weapons being used there, depleted uranium and so on. Um, Israel um, attacked Gaza, uh, targeted a civilian population, um, practiced collective punishment of a, a civilian population in violation of all the norms of international law and the Geneva Conventions. And uh, the outgoing uh, prosecutor, Mr. Moreno Ocampo, said that uh, uh, Palestine uh, had no standing in the ICC. So it seems as though uh, these rules apply only to weak nations. The ICTY, the Tribunal for Yugoslavia, is therefore a rare case of indictment of individuals for violations of international law outside of Africa. Serbian President Slobodan Milosevic died in custody before he could be tried. On May 30th, the ICTY acquitted Jovika Stanistik and Franko Simatovic of responsibility to war crimes committed in Bosnia and Croatia between 1992 and 1995. The acquittal was severely criticized by the press because the ICTY seemed to be interested only in the individuals who have committed crimes themselves and not in the officers and leaders who instructed their actions. 
Chuck Sudetik, former ICTY analyst, lamented that the ICTY is subverting the very intent of international law. He said, Arguably, if Hitler were being judged for crimes arising out of the Holocaust on basis of the aiding and abetting standard now being applied by the ICTY, he might well have gotten off. Milosevic would have also gotten off for Bosnia and Croatia. This is not blind justice, this is blindness. Danish judge Frederick Harhoff wrote a confidential letter to 56 people in which he claimed that the US judge presiding over the tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, Theodor Meron, applied intense pressure on the other judges on the panel to acquit the accused Serbian officers. He wrote in his letter, You would think that the military establishment in leading states, such as USA and Israel, felt that the courts in practice were getting too close to the military commander's responsibilities. One hoped that the commanders would not be held responsible unless they had actively encouraged their subordinate forces to commit crimes. In other words, the court was heading too far in the direction of commanding officers being held responsible for every crime their subordinates committed. Thus, their intention to commit crime had to be specifically proven. Although the ICTY is approaching the end of its operation, its verdicts are regarded as important precedents which could influence future decisions of the International Criminal Court, the ICC. Israeli officials are indeed concerned that Israeli soldiers or officers would find themselves prosecuted by the ICC. The Israeli government is aware that its actions in the occupied Palestinian territory violate international law and that the fear of an international arrest warrant would deter Israeli soldiers from taking part in activities in the occupied territory. An interesting case which might put Israeli officials on the defendant's bench after all is the attack on the Freedom Flotilla in May 2010, especially on the ship the Mavi Marmara. The ship was attacked in international waters by Israeli soldiers as it attempted to reach the Gaza Strip carrying humanitarian supplies, and nine Turkish passengers were killed. Turkey did not sign the Rome Statute and therefore cannot take Israel to court. However, Comoros, a very small country in Africa which signed the Rome Statute in 2006, filed a complaint on May 14th as the ship, the Mavi Mamara, was registered in the Comoros. Comoros demanded that an investigation will proceed for the purpose of charging responsible Israeli individuals with violating international law. This is Shir Hever for The Real News.